Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be creating two different card designs and we're going to feature a background stamp on each of them. I have the Ho 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 background as well as the Simple Snowflakes and I chose these ones specifically because they have very straight lines on them. You can see that the snowflakes go straight across the background as well as the Ho 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 and we're going to use those to our advantage so that we can do some straight ink blending across the panel. So the first thing I want to do is I want to heat emboss this design into a background panel. So I'm using a white panel that measures four inches by five and a quarter, and I'm using Versamark ink to ink up the stamp. Versamark is a clear sticky ink that's going to hold onto the white embossing powder that we're going to add to this. So what I like to do is I like to lay my background stamp onto my work surface, and then I like to apply the ink and bring the paper to the background. I find it a little bit easier to control this way versus trying to put the background stamp onto the paper. Doing it this way allows you to get everything lined up perfectly straight on your panel, which is kind of important for the design that we're doing since we're going to really emphasize the straight lines. Once I have the ink fully on the panel there, I'm going to go ahead and add the white embossing powder. And I'm going to go ahead and do the second stamped panel as well so I can do all the steps at once. So once again, I'm doing the Versamark ink all over the background stamp and I'm making sure to apply lots of ink on there. I want to make sure that I have a fully stamped image so that it holds all of that embossing powder. I'll bring my panel to my background once again, add that ink on there, and then I'll just apply that white embossing powder over top. Once I have both panels fully finished here, I'll take them both to my heat tool and I'll heat set them, which is going to make that white embossed detail permanent on the background panel. And then when we start to do our ink blending, we're going to see that white coming through on the card. All right, so now that we have the embossing done on both of the panels, it's time to do the ink blending. So the first one I'm going to do is the snowflake design. And what I'm gonna do is use repositionable tape and I'm adding a piece above and below one of the rows of snowflakes. And what I wanna do for this one is use blues and purples and kind of create an ombre look with the stripes going down the panel. I don't want there to be any white space in between the stripes, so I'm going to make sure to line them up so that the color blends into the next one. And I'm just gonna go one at a time and start to add the color in between those two pieces of tape. I used tumble glass for the first stripe and then I quickly moved the tape down. I'm just reusing both of the tape pieces for each of the rows here. And then I'm gonna move on to peacock feathers, which is a little bit of a darker blue. Then I'm gonna move on to mermaid lagoon, which is a really nice bright blue color. And then I'm gonna to go to the darkest blue, which is chip sapphire. This one kind of has a purple hue to it, so it blends nicely with the next color, which is dusty concord. And that's going to be our final color and bring a little bit of purple into the design. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with Wilted Violet or this one here, but the Wilted Violet is a lot brighter, so I think this one blended a lot better with the colors. Once I have that done, I went ahead and removed the tape, and you can see this really cool design that we've created, and we have those snowflakes kind of highlighted in those five rows of color, but we still have that embossed detail on the rest of the card, it's just a little bit more subtle. Now when you do add the ink blending to the design, it tends to kind of lay on top of that embossing, so what I like to do is just take a cloth or a paper towel, and just very carefully go across that and wipe it off, and it will remove any of that extra ink, and you can really see how bright white those snowflakes become. You just wanna be careful when you're doing this that you don't smudge the ink above or below that ink blending. Okay, so now we can move on to the Ho 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 design, and for this one I wanted to use traditional red and greens, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the exact same way and put the tape onto the panel, but this time I want to have a little bit of a white line in between each of the colored rows. So rather than leaving a little bit of space above and below that text that we're using the ink blending on, I'm going to actually put the tape right against the top of the text and right against the bottom. And what that's going to do is create a very thin white line in between each of these rows. I really love the look of it. It kind of gives them their own space and really helps them to stand out on their own. For this design, I did the first two rows in greens. I used Twisted Citron and Mode Lawn. And then I moved into my red color. So I used Worn Lipstick for the first one, which is a kind of a lighter red. Then I added Festive Berries for the middle one, and I finished off with Fired Brick, but it wasn't as dark as I wanted it to be. So I did add some Aged Mahogany directly over top of that. And now you can see we have the same pattern. We have five rows of color. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off that extra ink like I did on the first one. But on this one, we have a little bit of a different look because we've left that white space in between each of the rows. I love both of the designs. I'm not really sure which one is my favorite. I think it's a really cool way to create a card design using a background stamp that's quick and easy and adds a really fun look to your card. So now you can see both of the designs side by side. We have one more geared towards Christmas and the holidays, and then the other one is a little bit more winter themed. You can do this with any type of background stamp as long as it has that straight line detail in the pattern. 
So the last thing we need to do now is stamp out a sentiment that we can add to both of our cards. So I've picked out two sentiments from the Snow Globe Sentiment Stamp Set. I have one that is winter related and one that is Christmas related. And I've stamped them onto black cardstock with Versamark ink. And I'm covering them both with that same white embossing powder. I heat set them with my heat tool and now I'm using the Skinny Strips Dynamics to trim out both of these sentiments so that I can add them to the front of my cards. For the Ho 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 one, I decided to put the sentiment strip right in the center, so I cut it out with the smallest skinny strips. And for the winter one here, I cut it out with the longer one so that I could cut off the side and have it flush with the side of the panel. I decided to use colored card bases to coordinate with the ink blending that we did on the front of the panel. So for the winter one, I used a blueberry card base, and for the Christmas one, we're using a wild cherry card base. Both of these measure A2 in size, which is 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inches. And once I have those panels on there, our cards are complete. I'm keeping them exactly as is because I want to keep them nice and clean and simple and not have a lot going on aside from those ink blended stripes. I hope today's video gave you some ideas on ways that you can use your ink blending with your background stamps to create some really fun patterns. As always, I appreciate you being here for another video and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much for watching.